Let's get you started on that conversation now about the youth and leadership in Kenya. Remember, these are the latest, of course, statistics from uh, different research and it confirms that indeed a huge majority, of course, our of our population in Kenya right now comprises of young people between the ages of 18 to 35. In fact, and I, uh, actually the estimate is over three quarters actually is made up by under people, of, of course, of people under the age of 35. But do, they, do we see, of course, this, a similar participation of young people in leadership? That's the question we ask ourselves this morning. And we want to talk about this, of course, with the 2022 elections one year away. Thousands of young people are lining up to take up those seats. Will they be voted in and will they bring the change that many Kenyans desire to see in the current crop of leaders we have in Kenya? With me in studio this morning is Honorable Gideon Keter, is a nominated member of parliament representing young, pe young people, of course, or the youth in the current parliament. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. All right, and also joining us this morning is Ruth Ambogo. She's a youth leader and political aspirant. Of course, one of the people we're mentioning. We're likely to see her in 2022. Good morning. Good morning. Karibu sana. Asante. And also joining us this morning is a face you might have seen in the 2017 elections, especially the presidential uh, debates. And this is Mudiora Carriera. is the party leader of TGN Party. And, of course, he's also very much interested in the world of leadership and politics and they will help us this morning to dissect the state of youth and leadership in kenya and what 2022 looks like and we want you to be part of that conversation by the way by tweeting us at ntv kenya at victor kiprop underscore this morning we ask you do you think the youth are pulling their weight when it comes to matters leadership do you think the youth are pulling their weight when it comes to matters leadership if you want to call in the numbers will be below your screen but maybe that's actually a right place to start of course not victor if we were we wouldn't be the marginalized majority mm -hmm. which we are you look at the landscape in kenya and it's disappointing that the youth significant as they are in their numbers expertise perhaps not so much in terms of experience mm -hmm. but of course they make up for that with enthusiasm and passion yeah. we do not get sufficient opportunity to give that which we can to nation building because most of the opportunities available have been reduced to matters of tokenism and who you know are yeah. the opportunities denied or you are not going after them we have been going after them and mm -hmm. I'm glad that a lot of the interviews with regard to national appointments have been televised lately yeah. and you can clearly see that young people are applying for those positions mm -hmm. but how many of them are making it? Mm -hmm. Almost none. So you think the voter is the problem here? The problem is not the voter. Mm -hmm. The problem is the way the system is skewed. Kenya's governance system was rigged straight from independence. And fortunately, those who have scaled up the ladder have not put in sufficient efforts to level things, which is what we all should concern ourselves with. Okay. Ruth, I, I take note of the fact that he uses the word marginalized. Is this the same yes. way you feel? Well, um, it depends on how you look at it. Okay. Uh, because the initial question was, do we feel that young people participate as they ought to. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, previously, before I became an aspirant, I was one of the people who would directly and automatically answer and say that, oh, young people are not participating in, in politics, not many of them are coming out, not many of them are, you know, going for the opportunities that are available in the political space. That used to be my automatic answer. Mm -hmm. Until I joined and became an aspirant and realized that we actually have a lot of young people who put themselves out there for leadership. And when we talk about leadership in this country, I think it is, it is proper to categorize uh, leadership because we have appointive positions of governance mm -hmm. and then we have elective, elective positions, positions of governance. Mm -hmm. When we talk about appointive positions of governance, that's where the problem is. That's where you find you know, a lot of young people being shortchanged, young people who probably qualify for positions of leadership, not getting, positions of le not getting into positions of leadership. Mm -hmm. I have seen situations in other countries where after elections you find young people, young people as young as 20, in their 25s, 30, 30s, 30 years of age, being appointed to ministerial positions, being trusted that they can actually, uh, they can actually uh, lead the at such, uh, you know, 
be at positions of policy influence. But then now when it comes to elective uh, positions of, of governance, again, we have various problems that young people face in order to access those positions. The question is not whether young people go for these op opportunities of leadership. The, the question is, do they get them? You know, Because when it comes to uh, elective uh, positions of governance, mm -hmm. a lot of us go for those positions. Yeah, uh, at the moment, personally, I'm vying in Vihiga County, yeah. and I can tell you I'm seeing a lot of young people vying for various positions, a lot of young MCA aspirants, a lot of young <sighs> members of parliament who want to vie for positions of, 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 gov of, of uh, I mean, elective positions. But then the question uh, becomes, when they get to, you know, the party primaries, when they get to, they, there's a lot of party politics that happens in the, in the various political parties they want to, uh, to, to vie for. And then also there's a, the other question of the electorate. Has the electorate gotten to a point where they can trust that young people would be able to lead, mm -hmm. that they can trust that someone my age yeah. um, uh, would be able to, you know, take up the position, for instance, of woman representative okay. without bringing up questions that are unnecessary questions that they usually bring up when young people are vying for seats of leadership. So like the problem is no longer young people not going for these positions. The young people going for these positions and missing them. But then, yes, young people are going for the positions, but the barriers they have to face in order to access, you know, to, to actually now get elected yeah. is, is what becomes, you know, the question. And I'll, and I'll come back to the issue of the barriers really later on. But, but really, Gideon, what are you guys offering? What's the different thing that you guys... Maybe you're not being elected because you're not offering anything new. You're just the same... Uh, with the people who have been in this business for a while now. What are young people offering? Mm, what I understand. Change comes from power. Mm -hmm. And power comes from organization. Mm -hmm. And lack of organization, you won't influence anyone. You won't make anybody feel you're going to bring anything new. Mm -hmm. And if you want to look at our country, you will see how the top leadership, the people who have been in the system for the longest time, yeah. how they always try uh, as much as possible to organize a, a following and get a very powerful followership. With that followership, they, they garner some power. And when they garner their, some power, then the followers feel, when, if I join this team, mm -hmm. I will be able to change one or two things. That is why you find our political parties are normally organized around individuals. And I'll actually come if, to, to the point of whether you guys have actually been pocketed by, by, by political parties. But let's talk about the, 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 what you guys are offering, what young political aspirants are bringing on the table. With your, can you, do you think there's anything different that you guys are bringing on the table aside from what my current leader right now, maybe 50-something, 60-something is offering me? Well, besides passion and enthusiasm, mm -hmm. there are fresh ideas that the young people have. There is the energy. There is the vision. Young people dream and believe that within their lifetime, those dreams can come true. Mm -hmm. So it's incumbent upon a nation to trust the young people it has because that's the nation itself. They are the custodians of tomorrow. Now, the other thing that young people offer is integrity. Most of them have not been tainted. Uh, yes. Allow me to throw the joke here because I remember the president talking about something about trying to defend his decision to appoint the 80, 90 something or 80 something year old uh, VP, former VP Moody Award, and he said, Vijana Pesa in he'd rather appoint Waze. Well, the truth is, the president and the people who advise him mm -hmm. are far drawn from reality. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, it's the older generation that are more corrupt than mm -hmm. the younger ones. Yes, it's indeed true that a lot of Kenyans are dishonest and only lack an opportunity to loot. But given that opportunity, they will do what others have done. Yeah. But if you compare the younger generation to the old, a lot of the younger generation believe in a purposeful life, okay. in making a difference. Okay. And you look at the scandals we've had before. Out of 100 people, as much as 70%, over 70% 70 are youth in yeah. Kenya, those who have been implicated in corrupt deals 
are less than 2% who belong in the category of young people. So okay. clearly the, state, the president's statement was wrong. I'll, well, I'll ask Gideon if, if he did that statistic is true, but yeah, <laughs> because he's in... And is that valid, yes? Uh, Would you say that's valid? No. Because he's lifting the blame. He's, he's saying young people have not been accused no, of any corruption uh, at all, you, you, you and know, much of the corruption is involved. You, you cut me short before yeah. I finish. Uh, you finish your assessment, yes. Uh -huh. my, my sentiments, which is actually in line with what my friend is actually trying to share. Majorly, you try to find... Uh, Leaders try to tend to look for someone who has a following mm -hmm. so that they can fill in some position. Majorly, they are not actually looking for the integrity as youth. Ah. They are looking for someone who has an organization. Has the ground. Kind. Yeah, has a ground <laughs> so that he can fill in. Yeah. For example, when you go to Western, you tend to find there are few people normally consulted before they offer a position to someone. Mm -hmm. And there are perennial people who normally go there, like Kijana Amalwa. When they see Kijana Amalwa, they, it is believed, Eugene. You, you know, Eugene Amalwa, it yeah. is believed that he represents the Western, and the Western is organized around, mm -hmm. uh, around him. So majorly, uh, even the old can also make errors, based on their reasons. Okay. But to say Moody Awori can perform better than us, yeah. that was a wrong statement. Okay. So and we can allow our president <laughs> to be wrong sometimes okay. when appointing. But at the same time, the president also appointed some young people also to, uh, to position of power. And does it mean that when you appoint someone younger to position of power, will they let us down? Mm -hmm. That's another question. Okay. Yes. Letting, let, letting us down play both, both sides. You find an older generation also can disappoint us. Same case, a younger person in position of power can also disappoint us. Ruth, do you think this system of parties where they just handpick Gideon because he has the ground kind of leaves you um, disadvantaged a bit? Um, I would not. I mean, I'd say, the, of course, a political party will go for the person who has who has ground mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, they want to win. They want to win, mm -hmm. and. The political parties, I mean, if, if we are to look at the processes within the political parties, it is usually, uh, it's usually, they usually go through nominations. So by the time you're being picked by a political party, the assumption is that the people who picked you, because at the nomination stage, it's the people who actually decide who will become the flag bearer of the political party. Yeah. So uh, what happens is that, in fact, what you find happening in most political parties is that the people with the ground who most times are young people, mm -hmm. end up not being uh, awarded the certificates that they have rightfully won. Yeah. So that is what disadvantages young people. It is not that the political parties pick young pick, pick people with, with a following because most, most times mm -hmm. it's the reverse that happens. That I myself, for instance, have I, have, I have the following, <laughs> I have gone to the ground, I have, I have marshaled up the support of the young people, they believe in me, they vote for me at the nominations, but then now when it comes to they the political party the stage, problem. the party decides on very diff totally different grounds. Yeah. And most times you find the grounds on which they decide is the grounds of the person who will give us, you know, money okay. the most, the most money, and for instance. And of course, young people The person don't have who will money. finance the party leader, you know. Yeah. So if, if I come to the party leader at the nominations and give the party leader five million shillings versus as opposed to another young person who's just coming with a following, who do you think the party will go for, you know? Gideon, are these the things party true? needs resources. Yeah, it is true. What so where does it leave the youth? Because you don't have the millions. Now, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is the mathematics of competition. Mm -hmm. Within your space, who can deconstruct you within seconds? <laughs> that is what anybody fears mm -hmm. in politics. So you tend to go to someone who has been there a, a bit and you, someone who can stand in or who can be deconstructed. And normally that is the disadvantage we normally have as young people because we are the new entrant to the field and then we have the new following we have not yet solidified yeah. or it has not been tested or tried and tested. Mm -hmm. You tend to find uh, a political party leader will tend to go to someone they have worked with before. Mm -hmm. But to us, we just new. We are coming in with new ideas. So we have a lot to prove with time. Okay. And that brings in also the idea of tactics. Does the end justifies the means? Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes what we just need to do as youth leaders is we need to demonstrate courage. We need to, to go beyond just 
organizing in our villages. Okay. But also try to understand who am I competing with and how can I deconstruct also uh, those people who I'm competing with. Okay. For example, in different regions, when you go to Nyanza, it's very hard to deconstruct uh, Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Many people have tried and they failed. When you go to Rift Valley, Moi was the kingpin. But uh, William Ruto managed to deconstruct the entire system. The old man retired, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was able. Uh, when you go to Western, in, in Eastern, uh, nobody has been able to deconstruct uh, uh, Kalonzo Musyoka. Mm -hmm. Mutua has tried and the rest have tried. Yeah. So when you go to Central, it's different. So what actually we need to do is let us find a way of organizing ourselves. Yeah. And that is the only way we are going to gain power. Even if it means we are going to concentrate on one issue. Okay. And when I talk about a community, is I don't talk about physical community. Let's like say, for example, Ruth is coming from Viga. He, I talk, he, she talked about uh, Viga community. I want, as youth, let us talk about a community as, as a community of interest. Okay. For example, right now, the new party is organizing themselves around Hustler around someone who, from, the, from the lower level mm -hmm. and, and there is a need for that person from the lower level to be, to be at par with the rest of the people. That is a community that needed to be, to be, to be reminded that they can as well be some people in an in, in entire country. Okay. So that is what we are actually, that is a tactic youth leaders need to have and they need also to do enough research so that when they are engaging in their various communities, they can speak to issues that are related to the interest of the larger population. Muthiara, do you want to weigh in on the issue? Because sometimes campaigns involves millions pouring into trucks and t-shirts and whatnot. So I'm just a campus leaver. I think I can actually lead like uh, John Paul Murigi. I, I think that's his name. And But the people you're competing with are well moneyed. They are fl trucks of money is being dished out every morning. And you just feel like, you know what? I'm the dunk in this horse race. Mm -hmm. Oh, Victor, even though I disagree mm -hmm. with Gideon, yes. Gideon's opinion about Ruto deconstructing former President Moi mm -hmm. and the hustlers' con game, yeah. I agree with his idea about organizing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that the young people have not been able to do. Mm -hmm. We have lacked courage to step up and be bold that our ideas can solve the problems in our society. And we believe in them and we go after them. Now, I mentioned earlier that the ground is poisoned. The system is rigged. Yeah. Because the people who fought for our independence had this idea about tulinyakuwa uhuru, mm -hmm. after which wakanyakuwa kila kitu. Mm -hmm. And then the terrain became, you've got to give me or make me do something, even when it's my duty to do that thing. Uh -huh. And thereby, the culture of handouts and tokenism was born. Now, it's difficult to change that overnight. I ventured into national politics in 2017. Very courageous, by the way. And it has not been easy. Mm -hmm. I learned early on that in this game, there is a slaughterhouse that waits for you if you do not organize properly. Yeah. And the reason I ran as an independent candidate in 2017 was because I did not feel represented in the establishments that existed there. Yeah, okay. They were cult or individual based. So what we've been doing is building a vehicle that is all inclusive, mm -hmm. that seeks to lift those whose voice has been crushed over time. Okay. So, unlike before where we've had parties that are built around individuals and communities, yeah. TGN, like you mentioned earlier, the Great Nationhood, is a party that is offering all Kenyans, but with specific emphasis yeah. on young people, an opportunity and a platform yeah. to bring their ideas forth, yeah. sell them to the people, and try to deconstruct the narrative as has been. Okay. Briefly, are we going to see you in 2022? Of course. Of course, <laughs> I'll be running. Yeah. And I'm glad that I made my first announcement on NTV. Yeah. That come 2022, <laughs> yeah. I'll be on the presidential ballot. 
I was a running mate in 2017, mm -hmm. but in 2022, I intend to, to do run. that which I was not able to accomplish yeah. in 2017. Do you think the young people of Kenya will vote for you? Given the following we have on the ground, yeah. the prospects are looking good. Yeah. The only thing we need to do at the moment is to convert the followership that we have into voters okay because there is a disconnect right now where people can cheer you but then they do they not show up you. when <laughs> they are called upon. okay but Ruth, let, let me just take you guys back a bit because i mean it's now clear that all of you are going to be in the ballot in 2022 for different political seats but what's the motivation why are you guys going for this because a huge part of um research shows that most of the the bigger motivation here is the money well, <laughs> the that is the assumption. <laughs> that is the assumption. I think every individual has their own motivations. Uh, that uh, they, they have their own reasons that motivate them to join politics. But for some of us, and and it's it's evident in the past that we've had in 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 our histories that we're actually passionate about bringing about change. I'll give you a I mean a history of uh, Gideon and I share a very long history of being in the youth leadership space. Mm -hmm. We've been in the youth leadership space. I, I think it's dating back to way back when we were still in campus, you know, back in 2013, 2014 years, mm -hmm. when we were very young, had zero understanding you of what party. Young, come on. You know, yeah. <laughs> when we were younger. Yeah. <laughs> when, we were, when we were younger, yeah? yeah. When we had zero understanding of what politics is, how party politics plays, national politics. We had zero ideas of what, uh, you know, national politics was. But at the campus level, we were still keen on bringing about change. We are still keen on coming up with projects that would involve young people in seeking solutions to the problems that we face. And I think personally for me, yeah. the motivation back then was that, you know, as a young person, I'm at a better position to be able to bring and galvanize my fellow young people to come up with solutions to the problems that we face. Okay. The problem of, of, I mean, the perception that we have about our leadership in this country is a very skewed perception where we think that a leader should be a solution to all the problems, that, you know, that a leader should resolve pretty much each and every problem that we face as individuals in the society, when in reality what leadership should do or bring about is create an environment where the people themselves can come up with solutions to the problems that they face. So I think for me that is the motivation, that I would want to be in a position where I can be able to create an environment where young people uh, from Vihiga County or Vihiga, uh, where I come from yeah. can be able to come up with solutions to the problems that we face as a people and just, you know, just change change how things are done. Yeah. For all the years that I have, I have, I have lived, yeah. Vihiga County, I keep telling people that Vihiga County is the same as it was, you know, mm -hmm. unlike other other counties where you see the evolution has brought about change. You you live one year, you come back after one year, you can see some buildings, business establishments have been have been created. You can hear of programs that involve young people that have been established by the leaders in Vihiga County. It's it's pretty much the same the same story, and I want to you know change the narrative. Gideon, sh certainly, I mean, uh, is there a genuine case for why you guys are going? Because this is one of the best paying jobs in Kenya, unlike in other countries where <laughs> politics actually doesn't pay very well <laughs> politics in kenya pays very well you guys our mps are among the most paid well, well paid in africa if not the world so is there a genuine reason why you guys are going for this seat but i'm an economy and it's the shortest route to wealth uh, there was someone who said if your action if your action inspires someone to do more yeah then definitely you are qualified to lead because Leadership is all about activating an inspiration within people mm -hmm. or organizing people towards certain direction. So as for us, we have... Actually, I actually want you to speak for yourself because oh, okay. there are others who maybe like me are going for it because of the money. <laughs> no. I have tried to sit in my corner yeah. and do my things. But most of the time, I am called to participate in an organization mm -hmm. or to organize something. So every time I engage, the more I am compelled or asked to do more. Okay. And when I'm asked to do more, then I find 90% of my time doing the same thing. Okay. And that leads me to now go there fully and participate in organizing our communities. Allow me to cut you short again. Then, mm -hmm. then as I uh, sort of I wrap yeah. it up very well. Always, as 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 a young person, direction is way better.
than speed. So when you find uh, your mentors all the time giving you certain direction yeah. and, and, and pointing you to certain direction, that could be the calling as well. That okay. is calling to leadership. Okay. So there is a calling to leadership, not only simple, uh, by the few things you always do, but majorly by most of the people who surround you. Okay. The people, like birds of the same feather, flocks together. So when you when you are with leaders and and they tend to ask you to continue in the same process you are, you are continuing, okay. then you have no other option but to to do the same. All right, but but if we see, uh, because I, I think the tax that an MP earns mm -hmm. today, the salary plus the allowance oh, the and the mileage goes above uh, a million shillings. If we slashed it to three hundred thousand, would you still go for the seat? Uh, let me tell you, <laughs> interestingly, yeah, in in our country. Uh, it's the it's the setup is very different. Yeah, that that money uh, an MP earns goes directly to the, the people. people. Mm -hmm. You you can never find a member of parliament who has a pay slip over ten thousand. Come on, Gideon. Yes. Come Everything on. Everything is. You you are doing this for the cameras. I am. T I'm not doing for. You. I, I actually tell you. If we check your amount, pockets right now, yes, you can buy a lot of lunch here. <laughs> Members of parliament are very is broke. True. True. Yes, true. Yeah. Except that there is a compensating system mm -hmm. that is informal. <laughs> so it's the motivation is not, not actually the money. About. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because the money goes to the people and because you love them and you care for them and you want to do things together. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe in Kenya, leaders are very sharp. They, they are in leadership, but they are in business. So uh, I don't think you can sit ho at home and wait for it and, and say, I am earning good money. I don't want anybody to come to my compound. Yeah. Yes, you will face the, you will wrath, face the, of the wrath of the people. Al allow me to read this to get some feedback here because we asked, uh, of course, our viewers this morning if they think Kenyan youth are actually pulling their weight when it comes to leadership. And it's Alan says, Hatuna Pesa Ya Kufanya campaign. And I think he agrees, of course, with uh, some of my panelists. And Geoffrey Meyer says, the youth in Kenya are le left out in terms of politics. Geoffrey Omar says, no, a majority are simply quote, throwing their weight behind some overweight shadowy figures for pocket change. And, uh, of course, Okot Yasiasa says, leadership is given to someone with sobriety and skills to lead, not forgetting how having much confidence in him and her, regardless of the physical body and formation. But I'd like to go back to the previous comment. Geoffrey Omar says, no, a majority are simply throwing their weight behind some overweight shadowy figures for pocket change. And this brings me to my next point, because really, I mean, in the past, during Kibaki's regime and Moi's regime, the problem is we don't see the youth getting opportunities. But in the last 2013 and 2014, we've seen a number of young people like Gideon here getting to parliament, and some of them are actually being elected, not even nominated. But the question is, what have these guys been doing? Do you think they have been pulling their weight, the ones now that we have given the chance? Quite so. And I would like to commend Gideon here. Mm -hmm. I've been following him, and he's someone I would wish was given even more responsibility. Yeah. You look at the work he's doing in his community to begin with, it's quite commendable. And besides that, I think he realized that I had the privilege to be nominated and so I'll want to transcend into yeah. elective position. But look at his work in parliament. He goes to prove that what the president said about young people was wrong, was incorrect. Mm -hmm. You look at any other young person, except for maybe one or two who have had a bit of mishap, perhaps due to the excess energy that's among the young, yeah. they're doing quite well. They are proving that young people can deliver. Yeah. Now, that aside, I need you to imagine what would happen if, for instance, the people of Kenya came together and instead of electing the same tried yeah. and tested, who have let us down, elected a new crop of leaders. In every election cycle, over 70% of those who served in the previous parliament are kicked out. But at the top, things remain the same. Muriel, allow me to hold you there because Ruth, I'm asking this question specifically yes. because of one reason. Because there's a feeling that sometimes when we are passing really uh, important issues and bills in parliament, let's say an increase in fuel prices, or is it, um, I mean, the prices of gas and all that, we see uh, Gideon here and the likes being whipped to tow party lines. <laughs> we expect them to stand with us, but you see them, hey, they are so afraid of the party leader. And you can't help but think that they have been pocketed by political parties. 
Well, um, the one thing I'd, I'd say is that in terms of individual effort yeah. of uh, the young people who, young members of parliament and, and senators, we can see, I mean, if you look at the activities in Senate and, and, and the National Assembly, mm -hmm. for instance, when it came to allocation of resources, I think that was a debate that was going on last year, yeah. towards the end of last year. We saw quite a concerted effort of young senators who came together and said, you know what, mm -hmm. we are not going to take what the government, we are not going to take the, the government's position. Mm -hmm. And we saw how some of them were literally, mm -hmm. you know, they, they went being through, harassed, yeah. yeah, being harassed left, right and center, being arrested and all that. And basically for holding their ground and saying that we need more money to counties. Mm -hmm. So that was, an, that was evidence of, of what young you know a young leadership can do when they come together and say that they would want to bring about change and individually i i will give again an example of gideon gideon has come up with a lot of youth friendly policies into uh, at, at the national gideon, assembly you, you, he has have no, you seen these guys before you came trust into the me, studio we, we, in fact it's <laughs> been a while since <laughs> it's, we, we are okay, actually yeah. just appreciating the reality gideon has actually come up with legislation af uh, affecting young people yeah i i might not be able the to pinpoint board, I, think. I think i think yeah he'll be able to just elaborate yes the kind of legislations that he's come up with, but we see his work and we appreciate that. But we also must say the truth that there are there, there come there, there are usually times when we need young members of parliament to speak on our behalf, mm -hmm. to you know to 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 articulate issues on our behalf, and they go silent. And we For see instance, them saying, I you, vote yes. You know, I vote yes. They stand <laughs> and say, I vote yes, without any addition, without any sub subtraction. They mm -hmm. vote along party lines and that's where we need to do better as as young leaders yeah. because for instance during this time when we had covid when young people's jobs were being affected when you know a lot of young people were losing jobs and and there was desperation going on and there's still desperation going on we have rarely seen you know young members of parliament just coming up and saying that you know what we must do pe do better for the young people of this country we are coming up with this legislation we are giving these ultimatums to the government and we want this done for the young people we rarely see that happen and allow him to respond because he's the man on the spot right here yes uh what is your question then? the question <laughs> is are you guys doing enough oh, what are you have you been pocketed by political parties um i'll go back to organization mm -hmm. uh, organization is a bit powerful uh, an organized group is a bit powerful than an individual mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, they always remind you that the reason as to why we are here is because of one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you talking about the parties now? Yes, the parties. Mm -hmm. And then they tend to remind us as well that uh, to this extent, as much as you have a different opinion, yeah. they have sat down and they have agreed based on the competition as well within parliament. That if we take this route, there's a catch. And if we take this route, there's yeah. a catch. Then... There are exceptional cases, like w what Ruth has shared in the Senate. The young people in Senate and like-minded organized it themselves, and they were able to be. Uh, uh, they were able to come up with an alternative. They were able to deconstruct what the parties wanted, mm -hmm. and they were able to organize themselves and plan a better, better idea on how revenue sharing formula should should be okay then as 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 young members of parliament in parliament because the senate and, and, national, and assembly, national assembly we organize ourselves also within kypa and in this platform we tend not to identify ourselves based on our parties but based on interest that are affecting us and we take a common ground and we agree that this shouldn't be related to our parties okay and it has to do with the youth and it has to do with an interest yeah not necessarily a youth only but it can be uh, the interest of the country Gideon I have yeah. to take a break but before I do that have you found yourself in a situation where you have had to stand you know go against your party because you believe that indeed yes the people you represent uh, deserve or don't deserve this yes have you Yes. I want you to say it confidently. <laughs> yes. You need to tell us the instance. That <laughs> that's that's that. I, might, I might be reviving. <laughs> the committee yeah. level. <laughs> yeah, I might be reviving a disciplinary yeah. case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, uh, they do you feel, okay, do you that feel that sometimes and that this Yes, there's sometimes the intimidation. And yeah. intimidation is also another, another laid back or a, a very wrong strategy mm. to use as a party. Okay. Uh, because when, when you do something, they, they intimidate you, they send you letters, they ask you to face the disciplinary committee, 
and uh, sometimes you fear you might spoil you might spoil an, a chance by yeah. simply maybe acting in a different way so okay. sometimes you 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 decide to pause and postpone the war for another day. All right. We have to take a quick commercial break, but Gideon Kete, Ruth Mboga, and Mudiora Carriar are staying with me for this exciting and insightful conversation regarding the youth and politics. We'll come back after this commercial break. Don't go too far. Thank you for staying with your world on NTV this morning. We are talking about matters, youth, and leadership. How can we increase the participation of young people in Kenya's leadership landscape and for those who are already there are they actually delivering on their promises my guest this morning with me in studio Gideon Keteri is a nominated member of parliament representing young people in the current parliament Ruth Mbogo she's a youth leader and political aspirant of course come 2022 and of course Mudiora Kariara is the party leader of TGN and was also the running mate of course of a political aspirant that was in the last elections he says this time around is going it all the way by himself will the kenyan youth support a young presidential aspirant in the next one year well no but before we resume our discussion we have a small clip we'd like to play about what some of the young elected members of parliament have been doing Those are two members of parliament, by the way, Simba Arati and Silvana Sosoro, fighting in a funeral earlier this year. Gideon, that's not what we elected you guys to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on a spot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Because we tend to actually remember those things much mm -hmm. more than the other good things. The other that good do. things. Yeah. Unfortunately, actually. But uh, what I can actually say, uh, different situation calls for different reaction mm -hmm. based on different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, the intention of Osoro was not to go and fight. Yeah. It was to go and stop him yeah, from <laughs> continuing <laughs> with the conversation. <laughs> he, he was the and then he <laughs> was the surgeon at arms of the, of the event. Yeah. Then uh, Simbarati decided to fail to control his leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That is uh, the main thing. But he was just trying to go and remind him, my friend, you're politicking too much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching Gideon Kete right now, that's what we call a classic political <laughs> response. <laughs> which, is, which we must talk against. Yeah. As young people, when we mess up, we need to own up. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. Gideon, I think they please, apologize. Yeah. you need to it, make an apology it, it, for not being blatant <laughs> in condemning that. It ended up very wrong. Yeah. But I don't think that was the intention. Okay. Was, the intention was just to go up and tell him, my friend, you are over talking. Okay, guys, yes. allow me to revisit the issue of, of funding because this is going to be very important uh, in 2022. And, and, and really, before Gideon Kachir and other young MPs become pocketed in parliament, part of the pocketing begins during the campaigns because who's your good father? Who's funding uh, your campaigns, Mudiyoro? Yes, I'll actually give a live example. I have a friend who was running for MCA. Yeah. Miss Lee here in Nairobi County and he was poised to win but when it came to the nomination to have the certificate he received a call from the people responsible and I will mention the party it's Jubilee mm -hmm. no wonder <laughs> it's deteriorating every yeah. other day mm -hmm. and he was told and allow me to use Kiswahili yeah. ikitu mm -hmm. niyako lakini Babako wana shamba neza uza. Because he was supposed to raise three million in order to get the certificate that he had already won. To cut the long story short, he yeah. never got the certificate. The nomination went to someone else who could raise the money. So that's how a young dream was cut short. And of course, someone not worthy was elected into office because of the wave that the Jubilee came with in 2017. Now, what we need to do is to follow what Keter has been saying. Let's organize better. Let's build institutions, mm -hmm. which is why we are building the Great Nationhood Party of Kenya, so that young people 
or people with a vision for Kenya are not asked to give bribes yeah. so they can represent. Okay. We have to work on institutions. We have to desist from thinking that results will just pop just because we fasted and prayed. Okay. So, R R Ruth, uh, from, from what I'm getting, it it's, it's kind of feels like uh, being left between a, place, a hard place and a rock because on one, you don't want to be someone's protege, but also you don't have the hard cash, the huge, the millions that is needed for, for, for campaigns. So where does this leave a genuine young man who does not need and does not have a godfather? Wow. Well, um, I, I was about to say that sometimes the electorate is also part of the problem yeah. for putting a lot of expectations you know, on aspirants. Mm -hmm. That the moment I become an aspirant, I am perceived as the solution to all the problems that the, the society is facing, mm -hmm. you know, that I have to contribute to every other funeral that's there, I have to contribute to every other school fee fund drive that's there, that I have to basically be the solution to all the problems that the society is facing. I have to start building toilets, you know, contributing towards church, church, church fundraisers and all that. So I think the moment the electorate are able to lower the expectations, financial expectations they have on aspirants, it will be easier for, for, for the electorate to actually get proper, you know, leaders, yeah, okay. in the first place. Okay. And second, I think it also boils down to the question of networking. That I, 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 w I, was, um, I, was, I was a bit critical when, when Gideon kept saying organizing, organizing. He's been talking really about organizing. Yeah. But now I see uh, the aspect of organizing, especially when it comes to looking for funds. That can we build a network? For, I, I, w I would rather call it networking for young people than organizing. Because when it comes to resources, it's a question of who do you network with, you know? Uh, we always have choices. We have a choice to go for, uh, you know, money that comes from the bigger political players so that at the end of the day, or the political brokers that are, that are long known, you know, the, the long, the, the, the perennial political brokers so that at the end of the day we represent their interests. Yeah. But we also have a choice of saying that, you know, in, as opposed to going for these political brokers that are known, mm -hmm. that have been in the game for too long, yeah. why not network um, a different, you know, come up with a different network of people that can support my campaigns. Yeah. Uh, you know, look for young young people who are in business. Look for, for, for young entrepreneurs. Sit with them down. Sell your vision to them. Sell your agenda to them. You know, be able to convince them as to how you can make their businesses better without necessarily compromising when you get to parliament, you know, and get them to support you. And that way, mm -hmm. compromise becomes something that you, you, you will rarely hear of when okay. you get to, to Bunge. Gideon, how, how often does your phone ring? How many chamas and fundraisers? <laughs> Raisers and, and buildings and churches do you get invited every weekend? Everywhere. Every time, all the time, WhatsApp group, too many. Mm -hmm. And you can't avoid. We can't avoid. But before I answer that one, yeah. I would like to weigh in also in this discussion. Yeah. What is important to us as youth and leadership is the question of, as youth, where do we tend to organize ourselves? And what are the available options for us to organize ourselves mm -hmm. so that we may take up leadership? Most of the time, you find many young people do not participate in party processes. And they only appear when it towards the end, when it is closer to general elections. Yeah. And when they get to the party, they will say, this party is wenyewe. Yet, all this time, we are very good in organizing ourselves in a certain WhatsApp group. We are very good organizing ourselves in certain Facebook page. We are very good at creating an hashtag, thinking we are influencing change in our country, mm -hmm. leaving the available offices, the constitutional offices that we have been mandated to organize ourselves in, uh, and, and, and leaving it to the older generation. That is where we normally, uh, the older generation beat us down. Mm -hmm. That is... We organize ourselves away from the available constitutional offices. My call will be, let us join political parties. Let us join the youth leagues. Those are the spaces that are available. So that we may be trained, so that we may learn on how to, to go through a party primary as early as possible. To know and to understand how to deal with people, how to, uh, to raise funds, how to get good message to share with the people. Sometimes you might have seen good aspirants destroyed they go mad after some time simply because they they fail to understand simple tactics on how 
to organize us, yourself before the general election. Okay. So that it should be the discussion going forward as youth as we head towards uh, 2022. Because voter bribery is also another major problem okay. that is also affecting us. When you go funding, even composing a good message to, to the people within the people you want to lead, yeah. it is just a matter of packaging and mentorship. That is what we are lacking as youth who wants to come to, uh, to leadership. And it takes us a lot of time because we... we in something you could do in a shorter time, you'll do the long way yeah. simply because you are not given a good direction as early as possible. Okay. You want yeah. to respond? Yes. I Briefly. wanted to add that politics and money are twins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you do not have money in our current environment, you'll have it rough. And I'm a living testimony of that. I go through hell every day because I do not have money to give you want to see, you really want to be elected but you can't come to my mchango surely you can imagine always having to wiggle out of such a conversation mm -hmm. so i would urge all those who are looking to run for office in 2022 mm -hmm. to search themselves deeper and establish that their calling is authentic okay you're here to serve you may not win today but the people will understand what you what you stand for yeah and, and, and yeah and, and maybe if i can just bring in ruth briefly allow me to cut you short because sometimes we've seen actually people who perform really very well in parliament like gideon very good bills changing policy you're doing very well with the cdf but because of certain issues that you didn't do in the village you are elected do you think sometimes there's a disconnect between what is ideally your role as a legislative uh, as a member of parliament in on paper and the reality on the ground yeah there's there's a total disconnect and the disconnect comes in where the people don't uh, understand what various you know what various positions there's the roles and responsibilities of the various positions uh, mm -hmm. leadership positions that are available you will go to a village where uh, or rather you will find yourself in whatsapp discussions and i see this a lot in some of the whatsapp groups that i am in for vihiga county People telling a member, a member of county assembly that he has not constructed a particular road within the ward when on paper it is not, it is not the job of the MCA to no. construct roads yeah. or not even the job of the member of parliament to construct roads. Mm -hmm. So I think there's that disconnect in terms of information flow where the, the, the community has not been sensitized or been educated. There's no civic education on what our leaders ought to deliver so that we know what to expect from them. And then, um, of course, yeah, that, that's just it. Okay. And, and yeah. with the other, as you respond, then uh, uh, what are the options on the table for any young man who does not want to take money from uh, a political god or a godfather, for instance? What are the other options? Are there funds we can apply for? Are there institutions that fund political candidates they believe in? Well, there are organizations out here, quite a number of them, yeah. that support conferences and workshops and youth who are creating change in their society. So scan the horizon, you'll be lucky to bump onto a few. Yeah. Now, besides that, I was saying, if you search yourself and you find that your calling is authentic, yeah. you will develop the right temperament for the job. You will develop a thick skin because politics in a third world country such as Kenya yeah. is difficult. But over time, because your calling is greater than you, you're living for that higher purpose, you will keep doing the right thing and the people will eventually connect with your message. You, you mentioned J.P. Mwirigi yeah. that with just a pullover and a good idea and yeah. strategy, he convinced and the, people, were the people and the people him. backed him. That may be just one case amongst many, but we can have such cases across the country only if we believe and we do not sell out. The yeah. problem we have is we have young people who want instant success. It's going to be a process if you're going to get into power to impact the change that you need to see in your society. So let's be patient. You may not win today, but tomorrow or the day after, yeah. victory will be yours. And it shouldn't be individual. It should be for your community, for your society, and for your nation. Okay. Uh, Gideon, clearly the, the picture is a bit grim because people think that, you know, without the money, without being violent, you've seen the, 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 the way the politics actually come with some violence and insults, which mm -hmm. 
many young women aspirants by they just say watch to mimi nikai because that fighting and the violence and the insults by they I'd rather just stay at home and take care of my kids and look the other way of leadership like corporate and all that mm -hmm. but do you think that uh, you know issue based um politics and leadership is still a mirage as it was in the past or people actually believing in issue based uh, politics uh, interestingly the conversation has been shifting yeah from electing fools with money and now focusing on an individual who can inspire hope and bring change in the society mm -hmm. regardless of your money people will eat your money but these days i like the society that is uh, that that we have now the society we have now demands more than just money yeah. and they tend to guide you that uh, if you come and sure you do this and this and this and if you promise yeah. they always the advantage of technology is they will record you and then they will keep reminding you because you have so many secretaries when you go to the village when you go to certain place and if i get on my opportunity i'll do the following and the following and when you fail yeah. they'll hold they will you accountable remind you. they will remind you all the time and i like even some time back i had of a, a certain young man who had to return 5000 shilling to a certain mp because he contributed to to the to the wedding that tells you how the society is conscious so it is never the question of is the society ready yeah now the question is how best are your ideas when you want to organize that community okay. when you want to organize that constituency and that is also a challenge and it is an advantage to us the youth the only problem now is how the process to power to a younger person takes a bit longer time compared to someone who has been there in in many years okay and and ruth maybe the other shift that has also happened is indeed um in, in as much as some parties still remain very strong in certain regions and without maybe being a candidate of that certain party but you will not be elected we've seen situations where even in this areas you'd call strong old people actually just decide you know what this party politics is too much i'm going independent and they actually win because the yes. people trust them yeah uh, i have seen that happen in uh vihiga my mm -hmm. Home area MCA had uh, vied on a very popular party in Vihiga and he lost. I mean, he won, yeah. but he was denied the certificate. Mm -hmm. And yet he had the support of the people on the ground. He then tried again another political party where he also won the primaries and once again denied the certificate, I think, for lack of money and very many other, you know, issues that people bring up that are very unnecessary. And he decided that, you know what, I'm going independent and he actually won. So I think at the end of the day, uh, the, the lesson to be learned by young people is how best can we package our messages that how much impact or rather how much influence can we have on our people and, and what are the ways in which to organize our campaigns such that even if we lose on the big parties, we will still win whether we choose to go with the smaller parties or independent. So I think mm -hmm. it's a question of how do you just get the people to love you? How do you just get the people to stand with you regardless, you know? How do you get a solid follow followership that says that, you know, we do not care which political party you come with. We don't care whether you come, in you, you come to us as an independent uh, candidate or not. We are going to vote for you. So I think it's a question of how do you solidify your people? How do you sell such you know sell an ideal to them sell sell a vision to them that they can buy into that they will not care where you are yeah. or which outfit you go you come with they'll vote for you okay you know regardless you of briefly, your outfit. if anyone was ever in doubt that the youth can deliver what you have to say the youth can deliver and we've proved it since independence you remember we had great visionaries like tom boyer from back then, J.M. Karaoke, and you come all the way to date where we have the likes of Gideon, the likes of Ruth, I'm here. We do not just have sweet words and lofty ambition. Yeah. We believe in what we say. Mm -hmm. Some of us live it every day. When you hear a young man talk about integrity, talk about courage, talk about patriotism, they're not just words. Mm -hmm. For some of us, those are perspectives. They are what define our day-to-day -day life. Okay. So Kenyans need to give us a chance. Let us not just change the lower positions. Let us change the whole setup. Even up to the top. We've walked down all these other roads. We've seen where they've led us. 
we were lost. Let's find our way by trying other ways. Okay. Gideon, are you, do you think we're going to see more young leaders in this next election? Yes, definitely. Because uh, what we are trying to do in this table, mm -hmm. or youth from different corners of the country, is we want to continue being part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And when, when we continue part of the conversation, we, we try to activate the youth power in every corner of the country. Yeah. And also remind them all the time to press on because it is going to break very soon. Just like Spain, you find the entire cabinet, cabinet ministry is full of young people. Yeah. So we, what, we, uh, what we know, what happened in Kiamba, what has happened in everywhere, is uh, that there is a possibility that a young person is more attractive. When you come to Rift Valley, as long as you're young, yeah. uh, you, you are very attractive to, to be given a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. It's not a conversation that started yesterday. It started way long before. If you look at now the deputy president, he was elected at, as early as between 20, 27 to 31. Mm -hmm. And he has never stopped. And when you, uh, and as we speak now, entire Rift Valley, the average age is, uh, let, let's say the medium age is 38 to 40 mm -hmm. for, for us members of parliament. Yeah. And they don't spare you. When you mess up, they take you home. That's the beauty about it. That is the beauty about it. And the conversation has shifted to other regions as well. So and that being taken home, if a youth leader is not delivering, we also take yes, you home. Yes, because sometimes yeah. also youth leaders given positions, they let us down. And sometimes we call them out. We call them out. Okay. Good people, we have to wrap up this conversation and allow each one of you 35 seconds each to give us your closing remarks. Maybe I can start with you, Ruth. Uh, well, for me, my encouragement to all the young people, especially those who are vying, is that, uh, of course, the challenges will be there. There will be a lot of barriers to access the positions that we would want to access, but we have to keep pressing on. And to the young voters, you know, it's, it's about time we decide that, you know, we want our own in leadership because when we lack our own in leadership, then we are not represented at the table. And I always say that if you're not seated at the table, then yeah. you're definitely on the menu. Oh, okay. I think I like that one. Gideon? <laughs> You are the member of parliament, you've broken into parliament, you think you should come back, talk to the other young people who should be vote, voting for you, and also those who hope that they can join you in parliament if you're elected uh, in the next parliament. To my fellow youth, power comes from organization. And if we fail to get organized, we'll be organized despite us having the numbers. Mm -hmm. Let us recognize the institution our constitution has given us in organizing ourselves, in taking up power, so that we may bring the change we want. Okay. Let us stop running away from these institutional offices. Let us join political parties. Let us converse, have our conversation around there. And then let us drive our policy agendas through our political parties. Or else we'll be whining and whining in WhatsApp group and Facebook and creating hashtags for the rest of our lives. Okay. All right. With your, I want you to close the conversation for us. Well, I would like to tell Kenyans that the ultimate goal of leadership is not to create and maintain followers, but rather to inspire results that yield leaders. It's only a fool that tests the depth of a river with both their feet. We have tried those who are coming to us seeking election in 2022 before. And they have failed us by a long shot. In 2022, let us clean house. Msimu umefika tufagie wote. Kwanzia chini mpaka you. I'm glad the parties are crumbling. Yeah. There are newer parties coming into the fray. Let us look for those that stand for substance. And TGN is such a party. All right. Join the great nationhood party of Kenya. All right. Thank you very much. That's where we have to wrap it. But before we go, let's just get some quick feedback here. Bobby Riggs says, Kenyan youth are, quote, fooling around their weight. No sensitization of real issues, just slang slogans sold by veteran politicians and voiced by young politicians and wannabes. Utuboram Kulima says, how can they in our Kongwe with financial muscles or mekatalia wongozi like a leech buying some poor and vulnerable youth with handouts? And, of course, the last one I can read for in the moment is Mugumbuya Felix, who says, Kenyan youth integration into development strategies is highly ranked. Witnesses, I witnessed this in the IACD uh, and the SFL platforms, the numbers and ratings 
are very much high. That's where we have to live this morning. The key takeaways from my guests this morning, of course, Ruth says we have to press on despite the challenges. And if you're not on the table, you are on the menu. And of course, Gideon says if you don't organize, we will be organized. And Mudiora says only a fool tests the depth of the river with both feet. That's where we leave it at the moment. Many thanks to my guest this morning. Gideon Ketcher is a nominated member of parliament representing the youth. Ruth Mbogo, she's a youth leader and political aspirant in Viga County in 2022, as well as Mudiora Kariara, the party leader of TGN, who has on this show exclusively declared for the first time that he's going to go it all the way for the top job, that is the presidency in 2022. We wish him and all other young people they're all the best in those elections. We have to go for a quick Thank break, you. but when we come back, we finish today's show with a conversation that is ongoing. That is the impact of COVID-19 on the economy, especially the food processing sector. Don't go too far.